Hey everyone, it's Sam here. Thank you for watching today. So for this week's scraps video, I'm going to use these scraps here. So this is a Dovecraft. This is Fest Edition. This is a... I can't remember where this one's from, but I just love the florals and stuff. So I've got a nice idea for that one. I've got Dress My Craft. This was the Hydrangea collection. And then this one here is another Fest Edition, but we're going to be using those rose golds there. They look really nice. So let's get started. Okay, so first of all, I want to do another quilt effect. These ones seem to be really popular every time I share them. So I've got myself here. These are two by two inch squares. Yeah, and then you just want to cut them in half on the diagonal. So make sure you get it point to point. Like so. I don't think I need that one. I think I'd already cut enough. And then what I've done is using my trusty little distress tool, I've just gone around and distressed the edges. I just really like this effect, especially doing this quilt effect. It looks really nice. So if you're new to the channel and you've just stumbled across this video and you like this quilt style, check out the other scraps videos, which are linked now. And you can see some other really pretty designs. It's something I'm gonna try and feature some kind of quilt effect or pattern in every of my scraps videos. You'll see it just roughens up the edges there. This is great now to add ink to if you want to get a distressed look. And then again, I'll just do this one here. This little tool, I've shared it before. It's by Dovecraft and it's a little petal and it's got these blades in between. Sorry, it's a flower and it's got little blades between each petal. And you just rub it against the side there. You can use scissors as well. I just grab like these here. You just open up your scissors and just rub that along the side and that'll give you a very similar effect. Okay, so once you've got your pieces, you want to get yourself a scrap piece card and you can start making your pattern. That's entirely up to you how you do this. I'm sure this pattern has a quilting name. I know, I know the one, I think, is it Flying Geese? Um, and there's a couple of others I know when people say them. So I'm sure someone will comment with what this one is. But I'm just going to now kind of lay them out how I want them. Now, if you want to do this on a five by seven, you can. This is all going to go on a six by six. But if you do a taller card or even bigger, imagine on an eight by eight, you could have a bigger quilt effect. And also, if you shrink the squares down, if you want to do maybe one by one or one and a half by one and a half, as long as it's equal sides cut down on the diagonal, then you'll have you know, a different size and you can fit more squares on. But I'm going to do that effect to start with. And then, in fact, I think I've got too many pieces. And then these ones are going to go on the outside. And then I'm going to cut this out so it's on its own little square. Now, if you'd use different colours as well, then, you know, that will look really good. But I quite like keeping it all the same. You could um, use some playing card like this, for example, cut it to two by two, distress the edges and then put that in and then put it on maybe a white background or something. Actually, I didn't need them, so I'll keep them with that other one. I'll probably do another card. So you want to create your pattern. And then I've just got some foam dots here. And I'm going to pop three on each. So one in each corner-ish. And then take that off. And I'm just going to stick them all down. And then I'm going to trim. I think this is the raw edge because it's a little bit wonky. So I'm going to focus on this corner here. So I've got a nice border and then I'll just cut that down to size. OK, so now I've stuck it down. I've also trimmed around so I've got something like this. You've got a nice topper. Then I've got a piece of cardstock here, which is just a little bit bigger. The frame size is entirely up to you. But you'll see that's going to sit on there with a nice frame. And then I've got bigger again in the same blue. And that sits in there. And then that is all going to go on the front of a top fold or side fold, six by six card. So I'm going to get that all stuck down. Okay, that's the finished card, but because I had those extras, I just cut a few more and I've made another one. I think I prefer 
this one because there's a more of a contrast between these in the middle which have got more of those richer purples and then these four on the outside have the more green from the leaves so i definitely think for me this the scraps that i chose for this i love but they're all very soft i think if you've got some scraps where you've got a real contrast of stronger colors darker versus light things like that you'll really show up this kind of quilt effect but i think it looks really really nice i've just popped a simple sentiment in the middle I also put a um, foam between, obviously, the, these pieces, but also between that blue and the white. And then this is on foam as well. But that's card number one using that quilt pattern. OK, card number two, nice and simple. It's more of a sketch card again. I've done one of these last week. So I've got a five by seven card blank. And this is a piece of five and three quarters by six and three quarters. I'm just popping my Kalau clear all purpose glue on the back. I'm just going to stick this one on the front. So I've got that nice border. And I've already cut these pieces. You see, I've focused on that lovely rose gold. And I've also fussy cut these butterflies. These were on one of the scraps from the pad. It's actually this sheet here. So I just fussy cut some of those because it obviously all matches. So we'll start with this biggest one first. So this is the white matte layer is one and three quarters by six and a quarter. And then that pattern piece is one and a half by six that's going to go about there i'm going to lift this up on foam as well then this one here is the white is two and a quarter by five and three quarters and then the pattern is two by five and a half and then this one here this is lovely with the pearlized card and the white is three and a quarter by three and a quarter and then three by three for the pattern piece there so i'm going to grab my foam and I'm going to lift this one up here. People ask me about this tape roll. I've had it a long time. I was actually sent it from Arteza. So it is on their website. But once this is gone, as much as I like it, I like the foam that you can rip and tear. So I'll be just getting my cheap and cheerful foam tape from my local pound shop. But I'm just using this up. So it's gone, but it's really nice, really strong, but I like to tear. If this was terrible tape, then I'd get this again because it is nice, but um, it's plastic. <laughs> so I'm just going to now pop this down one side of this piece and then I'm going to add liquid glue to the other half because this is going to attach to this one here. So just have that of in the middle like so and then this one here i'm going to have towards the top and i'm going to have my sentiment down here so i'm just going to pop some which way up does this one go yes yeah, so i'll pop two bits of tape on this side here Ooh. but leave the other side because that's going to overhang but then this one is going to go, let's have it about there. That looks nice. I'm going to get the sentiment down. So this is from Chaplin's, but again, it's the craft brand. So you can pick these up in a lot of places. But I thought the especially for you, because it had that nice soft yellow. But then again, the thank you actually looks really nice against that. I think I'll go for the thank you, because I do send a lot of thank you cards. And I think we'll have... I'll have that one just about there. I think that looks nice. And then these little butterflies, I'm just going to use a little bit of glue. Just fold them kind of in half like that. And then let's see, let's do, have that one actually on that bit of the card. Once it's completely dry, you'll be able to really lift those wings up. So we have that one, then we do the blue and then we'll have the yellow down there. I think that'll look quite pretty. And then we'll pop that one at the bottom. But isn't that pretty? So it's a really nice way to show off all the pattern papers and any small images that you might have in the papers. You know, think about fussy cutting them just to add a matching embellishment. But that's card number two. OK, so for card number three, something a little bit different. So I've cut this piece of four and three quarters by six and three quarters. And I've just grabbed my butterfly dies and I've just laid a load of them down and just run that through and die cut them. So I have this piece. OK, now you could back this 
with some mirrored cardstock, anything you want. But what I thought it'd be nice to do is to almost paper piece each one with a different patterned paper. So I'm going to go for this one here, which is, oh, it's not forever free. I can't think what this one's called, but it's a, a first edition one. But I'm just going to have a different pattern behind every butterfly. So you are going to want to kind of cut it out and then sit it behind like so. In fact, that was a perfect size. And then we're just going to kind of tack it in place on the back. But that's one there. Um, again, I've got a nice pearlized one. And this one here, I think it was on one of them. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's... I think it was this bigger piece yeah so we've got these colors here maybe go down here and that would be quite nice example behind that one there and then let's get I'm trying to pull out some of the colors let's try let's try this bit down here these smaller ones so we could do like the purples behind that one maybe like the reds behind that one there but you just want to do that over all of them I've got this nice I feel I want a, a bigger print down here I might use some more of the pearlized or even maybe this one here actually be quite nice to use Let's just do this bit and then I'll speed up the rest of the video. But if we just pop that in there so you get a little bit of yellow. Yeah, see that looks nice. A little bit of yellow in the corner there. And then I'm going to stamp my sentiment here. I'll speed that up as well, You'll just, but I'll keep it in. But you can see me stamp that. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start piecing all different um, pattern papers behind each of those butterflies. So I've finished that and I've stuck it onto a 5 by 7 card here. This is just a pre-made one, but the colour went really well with the colours in the butterfly. But I like how the different textures on the paper catch the lights. You've got the pearlized here. You've got this gloss finish there. And if you do have the butterflies, the negative in this case, this well, this is the negative space. But if you've got the butterflies, you could put them back over the top but just stick the body down so the wings are all lifted and then you just see little bits of the pattern but I wanted to just show off the pattern paper but I think that's a really nice way especially if you've maybe made a pop-up card or some kind of interactive card where it's displayed open I think this is a really nice way to decorate the front of it and then I've just put that sentiment so grateful to have a friend like you so that's card number three so for card number four I wanted to try something a little bit different so this has a focus on fussy cutting which I know some people will be like, oh, but you can definitely use other things that you have in your stash. So with this set of scraps here, there's just lots of images. There's these cocktail glasses. This one here has all different presents. There's ones with balloons on. And I just thought I'd like to use those as the embellishment on the card. So we're going to make our own edge. So this is a five by seven card blank, but card blank but again it'll work on any size card you have I'm going to open it up because I want to just focus on here and I've cut all these pieces out I've already done my sentiment there and what I want to do is start laying down I'm going to create a border towards the outside here and then we're going to cut around the edge to create our own edged card so I'm going to have the presents all down first so I kind of played around with where I wanted to place them now I'm bringing it in how about half an inch maybe even an inch you can bring it in as far as you want in fact I think I am going to come in just a little bit further because the idea is is this pink's going to be stuck inside and you're going to see this pink against the white border so you want to have this you want to have a quite a fun shape along the side which is why I'm sticking them all you know in different directions so but I want it coming off the top there and coming off the bottom something like that and then with these ones I can start to feed these all in now I think these I'm going to stick down completely but all of these are going to be stuck on foam so we can have let's have a cocktail just maybe there and we can have 
Maybe that one there. Another present. Could have that cocktail behind there because that'd be quite a nice shape to cut around. I know you can't see tons of it, but I've got another one here, so that can go at the top. So you can see more of that one. And then maybe another present in there. So I think something like that. I might not need to use those. So I'm going to stick, like I said, the main ones down completely. But all these little pieces are going to be popped up on some foam. So I'll change it up a little bit, but I really like these ones on the foam. I think they've just really do pop. Now, you don't have to have fussy cut images. You could do a load of squares or circles overlapping each other. It's entirely up to you. And I'm going to just grab my scissors now. And I want to give myself about a couple of mil. And I'm just going to just start cutting around the edge here. And then the top pieces that are overhanging, just flip it over and just trim those pieces off. Again, at the bottom there, like so. So you can bring this in much further, but now you've got a really cool edge design. And then the idea with the pink is that when you pop this in here, so we'll cut this down to five and three quarters by six and three quarters. I'm just gonna stick this one inside. now when you close it you really get to see that edge detail and then with my little sentiment here so it's quite a clean card i'm going to have i might put a bit of foam underneath that one as well but i'm going to pop some foam on there and stick that one down and that's card number four finished really like the clean look about this i love all that white space and then just all that detail on the border with that pink in the background i think it really does make it pop and then what i would do is pop another white piece just down here so you've got your space then to write your message or if you've got any of your glitter pens metallic pens and you can just write onto that but yeah really like that one it's card number four so for card number five we're going to use some acetate so this is a scrap piece it was longer so i've trimmed it down so you want it to be the six inch width of the card and then the height of mine is the height that it was like i said it's a bit of scrap it's five inches so this is going to go onto the front of the card but we need to cut away the front of it so i think i'm going to cut so we've got an inch left i'm just going to line up the score line with the one inch and then just trim that away so now we've got this piece and now that should, or it just sticks, it just about fits. I'm going to use a very thin tape. I would maybe bring yours down so it's maybe one and a half. Um, or if you've got thin tape like me, then that's fine. So I'm going to run a very thin strip. This is a quarter of an inch tape. If you've got the one eighth, that might even be better. Just snip that away there. Again, once you see what I'm doing, you can easily adapt this onto any card. I'm going to stick this back on the sticky sides facing up. I'm going to line up the bottom of the acetate with the bottom of the card. And then close that flap. Now we're going to put pattern paper over the top of this as well. So, But now we've got this acetate front on our card. Now I want to start creating a load of strips that are all kind of floating because there's going to be a gap of acetate between each one. So I'm going to cut some six inch by the width is entirely up to you. But you want to cut six inch strips in different widths. That was a mouthful. And then you can start sticking them all onto the front. But I'm going to have the first one with a bit of a white border there. I must have got these a bit longer. But I'm going to stick that one there and then the same one will go on the back. Then I'm going to have, yeah, I'll do this one. The gap in between is entirely up to you. That one and this one. The topper I've got is this. This is going to go right in the middle. And then, yeah, I'm going to cut some more strips. And I've got a thin one. And then I think I'm going to do the same, actually. So I've gone down in size, 
So then I think I'm going to cut another. So this is one. This is three quarters of an inch. This is half. This is a quarter. So I think I'm going to do another one, three quarters and then a half. I probably will get in there. And then I'm going to pop that on some foam. It says beautiful day and it's just going to go right in the middle. And those will all be stuck on the reverse side. I'm just going to use my tape runner because it's going to stick really well to the acetate. And here's the finished card. Do you know what? I think this is my favourite. It really does look like they're floating. When it's up like this, I know it's hard for you to see, but they look really effective. Definitely a style I'm going to be using again. You can see it better there. And then over this side, I actually didn't put the strips on all of it because the tape's really well disguised. And this is the, the taser tape. So I've only put it on these two because they're like a pinky colour. I just wanted it to keep it all that green. I mean, you can see the foam there, but um, I mean, you could if you want to be really, you know, um, you don't want to see any of that. Just put the foam between each of those pieces and then stick your topper on. But, you know, for a quick little card, I think that's turned out really nicely. And again, I would, I think for my message, so you don't see anything, I would maybe write my message on the very back, actually. But that's entirely up to you. But I think that one has turned out really nicely. So I'll just go back over the five cards that I've shared today. So this was card number one with that quilt effect. Then we've got this panel style one, which I think looks really nice. Love all the layers there. And then this one. Really fun way to use any negative space with your dies. And all those tiny pieces of your scraps as well will work really well. And then this one. Really love that edge detail effect. And then I think today's favourite, which is this floating kind of acetate panel card. I think it's turned out really well. So I hope you've enjoyed the five cards that I've shared with you this week. If you are new to my channel, maybe you've just stumbled across this tutorial, then check out the other scraps videos. I share the scraps videos every Sunday. I'll do five designs. And it's just a nice way to use up those scraps that you have rather than throwing them away. Check out the playlists that are coming up now or the individual videos if you want to go and watch a different scraps video now, showing you some other fun ways to use them. And also check out those other quilt uh, kind of detail or effects because you might like those as well. So take care, everybody, and I'll see you all again soon. Bye.